Well, if you have oil resources um, and any other kind of mineral resources, be prepared to be invaded by the United States because this is this is what the United States does. You might laugh about this, but this is exactly what the United States does, um, especially when you look at the proxy wars that the United States is in around the world. Currently involved, think about Somalia, Syria, Yemen. Um, God knows we're about to send troops probably back to Iraq, given the unrest that's unfolding there uh, and our need for oil. Uh, look what we've done in Afghanistan. Look what we're doing in Africa. So wherever there are mineral resources, get ready because we are going to be there. And that's exactly what we've done in Syria, where last week, of course, we showed you this video. If you're watching this video right now, this is uh, under the cover of darkness. This is hidden video of U.S. tankers, U.S. tankers. Why are so many U.S. tanker trucks in Syria stealing thousands of tons of Syrian oil and driving it off in these massive tankers? Where is it going? Where is it going? It's not going to the Syrian people, right? And we got breaking news this afternoon on Syrian oil. The Syrian oil ministry says that the U.S. are stealing an average of 66,000 barrels of oil per day in Syria. Think about that for a second. The U.S. is stealing more than 80% of Syria's oil, according to the oil ministry in that country. This is unbelievable. Uh, and as Morningstar reports, these this has continued, I mean, this is going on and on and on. Last week, the U.S. conducted fresh rounds of airstrikes in Syria. And meanwhile, their oil efforts have come to new highs, the U.S. stealing uh, Syrian oil. The U.S. wants to be the world's police, according to the Global Times, but it practices, but its practices expose that the country is in merely a global hooligan, bully, and a robber. <laughs> the occupation forces on Monday brought 123 tankers loaded with Syrian oil from Al Jazeera fields towards Iraqi lands. So they're taking it from Syria into Iraq in that video that we've been showing you and continuing to steal their oil, 66,000 barrels a day. Here's, of course, in any of this news, of course, you're immediately, when you hear these stories, it's amazing to watch like the, the Ukrainian flag emoji dissenters on Twitter immediately jump to the defense of this, like that this is a good thing. So look at this tweet. Uh, breaking. Oh, that news is fake, fake, fake. Fake news, fake news, fake news. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Says a Ukrainian flag. And his screen name is HIMARS Lover. Here's another Syria, Here's another tweet uh, from Jay Walker. Good. Good that the U.S. is stealing Syrian oil. Stealing more than 80% of their oil. Now, Steve Sweeney is a great reporter. Um, uh, from Morningstar News. Uh, according to the ministry, Syrian oil production for the first half of 2022 amounted to 14 barrels, 14 million barrels, an average of 80,000 a day. But it has accused the United States occupying forces of theft of 66,000 barrels a day, which is 83% of Syria's oil, Syria's oil output. Syria's government accuses Washington of smuggling oil out of the country via an illegal cross, crossing into Iraqi Kurdistan. Regular reports from the ground have been backed by footage and photographs appearing to show large convoys of U.S. tankers leaving the country, often escorted by Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic forces. They're also accused of stealing wheat, with tons of grain taken by the occupying forces, leaving many Syrians hungry due to the impact of U.S.-imposed sanctions. So just look at that sentence for a second. Think about that. <clears throat> the United States and Western allies sanctioning Russia, therefore inhibiting the flow of grain and wheat, right? We've heard those stories. We've heard the ships being blocked and, of course, uh, you know, in, in the Black Sea and so forth because of Ukrainian mines. So we can't get wheat and everything flowing out of this war zone, just the sanctions in general. So we are sanctioning Russia, who's, a, who's an ally of Syria, stealing their oil and stealing their wheat. So not only are we suffering, but we're doubly sanctioning the Syrian people by occupying their country, in addition to which, stealing their food 
and stealing their oil. Sources close to the SDF have confirmed that Syria's natural resources are being plundered by the United States, but said that journalists are often too afraid, too afraid to speak out about it. Well, we're not. We are speaking out about it. We're not afraid of it. Another journalist who's not afraid to speak out about it is Kavork Almasian. He's a friend of the show. Uh, he, he has a great YouTube channel called uh, Syriana Analysis, Syrian journalist. And we spoke to him. He told us exactly how this uh, theft of Syrian oil is taking place. Here's my interview with Kavork Almasian. You're sanctioning the Syrian government who is providing these basic necessities uh, to the people, right? And in order to make life harder on the Syrian people, the United States occupies now, as we speak, 50% of Syria's oil and gas fields in the eastern shores of the Euphrates. Wow. And when the American journalists go to report from there, they say the Americans are guarding the oil fields of Syria. But mm -hmm. guarding from who? <laughs> it's, <laughs> nice. like, it's like, it's like they, are, they occupy your oil fields and they're guarding it. You know, they're just keeping the oil there so that nobody can uh, use, uh, uh, the Syrian government can't use that uh, energy resources to, uh, because Syria is highly dependent on, on gas and oil for heating, for example, for cooking. Mm -hmm. So imagine during winter times, you don't have a heating in your, in your apartment. And I know this for a fact, people live, uh, sleep in freezing conditions. Thanks, America. So <clears throat> we're they, they, they tell us that they're protecting the oil fields by having 2,000 American forces blocking these oil fields so that the Syrian people can't have access to it, having to ration their fuel sources. While we, under the dark of night, steal it, and God knows where we're sending it, to Iraq, to the United States, selling it off for profit. Wake up, people. Wake up. Like, this is the kind of stuff that has to stop. And no one will report it. No one's talking about it. Few brave journalists like Kavork and Steve Sweeney and others who are covering this. No one else. Vanessa Bealey, Eva Bartlett, a few journalists covering this story. But mainstream media is ignoring it. And these people are going to suffer as the winter unfolds, all at the hands of these globalists who are, you know, imposing draconian sanctions on Russia and then also doubly sanctioning the, peer, the people of Yemen and Syria with these occupations and theft. This is something we should demand hearings on in Congress. We should write to our members of Congress and demand that they fix this. If you live in other parts of the Western world, if you live in the UK, they have just as much of a hand in this, any NATO country, as the United States does. So this is the kind of stuff we can try to stop, right? Collectively come together and do good and write to these people and demand answers. You know, if you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, share these stories, share this story with someone on Facebook, with someone on Twitter, and let them know about the tyranny that the West is uh, forcing on, you know, uh, is forcing and hurting these other countries. That's my little rant on that piece, but... I think it's important. Um, but, you know, and look, by the way, these countries, Turkey included, have long asked for these occupying forces to get out. Like, can you imagine? Just get the hell out of our country. Like, what the hell are you doing here? Get out of our country. Leave us alone. Don't tell us how to live our lives. Get out. You've got enough problems back home in the United States. You know, you... Cry. I mean, think about what is happening to American cities. And people of Joplin, Missouri this afternoon don't have drinking water. And the crime is, I mean, it just it makes me so sick. Like, we don't have enough problems that we need to be stealing people's oil and occupying their countries like this. <sighs> that's, that's what's crazy. The richest country in the world, that's what we call ourselves, we're, we're not, but the richest country in the world has to go steal resources from other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this isn't new. This isn't like this has just happened under President Biden. It's accelerated under President Biden. I mean, we've been, been doing it since 
You know I mean, global global fruit or world fruit. Like we've been doing it. Anytime there's a resource that we want, we go steal it. We don't buy it. We don't work out some kind of trade agreement to help that place. If and if they don't give it to us, we just take their take their land or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and we do it under the auspices of we're helping them, right? Right. We won't we won't give you statehood, but we'll just plunder your resources. That's what we do. Well, so it's what we did, and it's what we did with Mexico, where we kind of like went after went after oil producers in Mexico, and we're like, "You're not you're not doing this right because you're not trading properly with the United States, like in our favor." Under NAFTA, so we're going to like pressure your government exactly under NAFTA. So we're going to pressure your government to force you to sell us this oil in the right way because we don't want to have to come in there and protect it and show you how to give it to us. We just we just want to pressure you. That's you know, so it's the sloth diplomacy there in Syria. We can't do that, so then we have to go protect it and show them how to do it the right way, you know, with our boot of freedom. And, and, you know, with the Mexico piece specifically, if you're, you know, go watch that video. We did a whole thing on Mexico and oil, and and what Philip's talking about is, yeah, forcing the Mexican government to not nationalize its oil and therefore, low, you know, increase the prices on their own Mexican people to keep it in line so that U.S. oil manufacturers can make more money. So the Mexican people will suffer. So these, you know, Chevron and other big companies and Exxon can make even more profits because they're, they're not making enough as it is. They're really suffering right now. Well, that could be America's tagline. We could, we could just start saying, you know, America, like, we'll make you suffer so we don't have to, America. <laughs> well, Adam Schiff, I mean, for crying out loud, Adam Schiff said that on the floor of Congress. Remember, we're, we, fight, you, we fight Russia over there in Ukraine, so we don't have to fight them here. So we'll destroy your country of Ukraine in a proxy war, so we don't have to fight you here in the United States. Like Red Dawn style. Unbelievable. 